George explained that he was the owner of this body, and Toots and the Germets would have to go. Go? Why should we go? We like it here. <laughs> I'm making you feel sick? Oh, well, in that case, I'll be on my way. I I'll just uh, get, get myself. <laughs> Fool you! I'm never leaving! George knew he wouldn't feel better until he got rid of Toots. <laughs> but where did he go? <laughs> the lungs? <laughs> George and Yoki agreed to try his lungs first. <laughs> it looked kind of wet. Was this the lungs, or was it the stomach? Maybe they made a wrong turn somewhere. This looked more like a lung. When the walls moved out, air came in. When the walls moved in, air rushed out. George was watching himself breathe. Well, baby, huh? I'm in your love. Ooh, yeah. It's in your Ooh, love. Yeah, in your love. That toots. This was in George's chance. <laughs> so where should we go next? Uh, the throat? Hey, maybe the ears. Hey, 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 what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want to go. <laughs> George couldn't believe how hard it was to get rid of one measly germ. didn't have a feather, but he did have 20 fingers. No! <laughs> this whole place could blow! <laughs> George and Yoki had done it. Toots was gone. You're awake. How do you feel? George felt great. He could even smell again. For an important call. Calling George. Calling George. <laughs> I have the most amazing, exciting thing to tell you. Can you come over? Uh. Oh, right. We're in bed. Okay, then. Meet me at the clubhouse tomorrow right away. And don't forget. Bye. <laughs> The next morning, George raced to the clubhouse. Ah! Hey, hey! Hiya, George. Are you ready to hear this? Are you ready? It's kind of unbelievable, and I don't think you'll even believe it. So are you ready? <laughs> okay. I am going to... Kindergarten! Yeah! Kindergarten is where you go when you're big, and you need to learn stuff, like how to write your name in 8 plus 2. Ah! 
And I want you to come with me to get all my school tools. So can you come? Can you come? It was a good thing George went shopping with Allie because she needed a monkey's eye. Okay, which backpack? The lion, the witch, or the warthog? Hmm. Yeah, that's the one I wanted too because it holds the most stuff. See, in kindergarten, you need exactly three rulers and a cowboy belt and binoculars and pipe cleaners. Wow, kindergarten sure sounded like fun. Where else would you need three rulers and a cowboy belt? Guess what? These are two for one. Ooh. Would you like a backpack, George? <laughs> 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 Next day, George wondered how Allie was doing at kindergarten. <laughs> George! Ah. Ah. Kindergarten was great, and guess what? I told my teacher I was best friends with a monkey, and she said you could come to school with me tomorrow. <laughs> You'll be our official guest monkey. Wow! Here's your lunch. Huh? Your snack. <laughs> and just for luck, a brand new yellow pencil. Hey! Wow, a school tool. <laughs> Have fun. Be a good little guest monkey. <laughs> George discovered that just going to school was exciting. First, there was waiting for the bus. <laughs> then there was being on the bus. <laughs> and then there was getting off the bus. This is it, George. Kindergarten. Ooh! <laughs> Hi, Allie. And you must be George. <laughs> All right, class. Time to take your seats. Now, we're not going to create any more work for Professor Wiseman, right? Okay, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Feed the ducks. <laughs> you too. Fun, relaxation. Ducks. Okay, here I go. <laughs> George, careful. <laughs> Uh... No problem, we're still feeding them, right? It's fun, huh? Right? Ducks! But your hat is waddling away. <laughs> oh! My hat. We can solve this problem. You shouldn't. I, I should. Okay, how? Aha! Uh -huh. We can use the kite string to fish the hat out of the water. I just need a hook. <laughs> Perfect choice. Okay, want to toss it, George? Wait. Huh. Okay, try again. Aha! 
Aha! See that branch? Uh-huh. We can use it to lift the hat. We can? Hmm. <laughs> Fantastic! Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, uh, this wasn't what I planned. All you did was solve problems for us. Please accept my apology. Apology for what? I had a very relaxing day. Huh? Relaxing? Exactly. Hands-on problem solving. Not like work where I just answer questions and shuffle paper. Ah, oh, well, then, you're welcome. Well, see ya. <laughs> oh, okay. Ah, wow. Who knew relaxing could be so exhausting? Uh, sure. <laughs> Come on, George. I think it's time for a nap. George knew he had to keep Gnocchi away from that spaghetti strand. He had an idea how to do it. <laughs> now George had an accurate way to measure the building. This tape measure could measure anything. This was going great. 10 feet, 15 feet, 20 feet. Uh-oh. The tape measure was only 20 feet long, but the building was more than 20 feet tall. But how much more? <gasps> now how was George gonna measure the building? If only he had something longer than that tape. Of course, George had a spaghetti strand 30 feet long. <gasps> Say, aren't you Ginny the world record book lady? You are correct. Oh, I've been a fan of yours for years. Well, thank you. I'm here looking for... I know what you're looking for. Chef Biscetti's is this way. <laughs> There's Biscetti's restaurant. And here's Chef Biscetti's strand of spaghetti. <laughs> I have got to get a picture of this. George could see that the spaghetti wasn't touching the ground. Which meant it was a little bit shorter than the building. How could he measure the difference? <coughs> when George held the strand at the top of his head, it reached the ground. That meant the building was exactly one spaghetti strand and one George tall. Oh, yes. Oh, this is going to be spectacular. <laughs> Love this. Stevie, why you don't come back in the middle? <gasps> You're Ginny, the world record book lady. And you must be Chef Piscari. <laughs> yes, yes. And up there on the roof, is that your monkey friend? Uh, yes, a monkey. <gasps> Giorgio? Displaying your super long spaghetti strand. Here's the photograph I just took of it. Wow. Does that set a world record, Jenny? Oh, I'm afraid not. Here's the picture I took of Alfonso Dimitri displaying his strand of cooked spaghetti from the Leaning Tower of Pisa. No, oh, no. Now I'm never gonna get in the world record book. You most certainly will. You have the second longest strand of cooked spaghetti. Three stories tall. Son of the wow, God, Chief Three stories oh, tall. Oh, way to go. <laughs> Three stories. I gotta call Nettie and tell her the building next door is three stories tall. Wow. 
So Gnocchi finally got to play with the spaghetti. And Chef Pischetti broke a second record. World's longest cat toy. George always liked to visit the man with the yellow hat's old neighborhood. And that used to be the bookstore. And look, that's where I saw my very first movie. Oh, this used to be a great old theater. Maybe someday someone will fix it up. What's going on? Progress, that's what. Wait till you see the unique self-cleaning parking structure I've planned for this site. But this old theater is full of memories. You can't tear it down. Tear down this theater? You're not serious. Look at the beautiful lobby. This bijou's what inspired me to become a doorman in the first place. But it's tired and run down. It's a hopeless, broken old theater. George didn't think it looked hopeless. He'd seen the man with the yellow hat fix things up before. Why couldn't he fix up an old movie theater, too? <laughs> Repair the theater? Us? Right, George. If we don't do it, who will? How about it, Mr. Glass? Let us put on a special screening. We'll show you that this theater is worth preserving. I don't want to go out to a movie. With one of these, why bother? <laughs> but a movie is always more fun on the big screen. It can be a truly unique event. Unique? Hmm. Hi, you're a monkey, aren't you? Uh-huh. Okay, it's a deal. Uh -huh. Great. If you clean up this place and put on a unique, one-of-a-kind show, I'll save the theater. Mr. Glass, I, I promise we'll knock your socks off. Ah, uh -huh. uh, maybe this is hopeless. Well, let's see it with the lights on. See? It just needs a little TLC. Tender Lobby Care. You know, it'll take some work, but I bet we can put on a good show. <laughs> Cleaning up a movie theater was a major production. Thanks. <laughs> We've never played for a movie before. Here it is, Isle of Dinosaurs, one of Mr. Glass's favorite movies. <laughs> hey, great work, you two. I can't believe this is the same theater. Wow. George could run toy trains and count to 10. How tough could this be? Could you repeat that? <laughs> what did he say? Uh, number seven. Number eight. A anybody understand that? I don't understand him, but I trust him. <laughs> Fast work, Station Master.
Um, Station Master? We're sort of out of order again. Master, you did say reverse, didn't you? <laughs> Real trains were even easier than toy trains for a smart monkey. <laughs> All he had to do was simply move the number five train first. George was a great train master. The five moved into position, followed by eight, seven, nine, and six. <laughs> then six, seven, nine, eight, and five. Then seven, five, six, eight, nine. Six, nine, seven, five, eight. Five, six, eight, nine, seven. Seven, five, six, eight, nine. Five, six, eight, nine, seven, eight, seven, nine, five, six. Five, six, five, seven, five, six, eight, nine. And, and then 356? Is it just me or did that sound like a monkey? This wasn't like his toy trains anymore. George needed help. Flint was right outside comparing jelly sandwiches, unaware that a little monkey needed him. George didn't know why that warning bell wasn't going off. See, if the whole sandwiches are equal, the halves must be two, right? Thanks for holding down the floor, George. I'll take it from here. George still wanted to be a station master, but only in his own home, where he could eat a one-piece sandwich. Cutting sandwiches in half only leads to trouble. George couldn't recall ever seeing the man with the yellow hat looking like this. He was usually calm, cool, and wearing a yellow hat. Oh, here he comes. Hello? Good morning, come on in. Ready as promised. Ooh. Ah, it was worth living without it for three long days. <laughs> I'd rather carry it myself, George. You're not gonna wear your hat? No, I, I wanna keep it perfect till tonight. We're going to the opening of the new planetarium dome. Thanks. Uh, let's get home before anything happens to my perfect clean hat. <laughs> well, 
We made it safely. Okay, now George, when I get back, we're going right to the planetarium, so take a bath. There'll be photographers there. I want you to look clean and fluffy. George was going to take a bath, just like he was told. Sure was a perfect hat. Who could resist trying it on? George wanted Compass to see him in the yellow hat. It'd only take a second. George saw the hat fly this way, but it disappeared. <laughs> the hat was back home and still perfect. Almost. George removed the piece of branch as carefully as any surgeon working on any yellow hat could. Okay, there was just a tiny thread there. No problem. Maybe he needed to pull harder. Or maybe it had to be cut off. George had forgotten that the last time he used his safety scissors was to cut his strawberry jam and banana sandwich. It was only a small smudge. All he had to do was clean it off. This stiff brush got the grill sparkling like new every time, and the grill got dirtier than the hat. <laughs> He may have scrubbed too hard. The apartment building where George lived was a very orderly place. And that's how Hunley liked it. They're here to clean your carpets. People came. And people went. The elevator arrived. And people came down the stairs. Everything in Hunley's lobby was orderly and neat. Well, almost everything. We can't go back into the apartment until the carpet is dry, George. So you stay here in the lobby while I run my errands, all right? Okay. Oh, oh, and in case you get hungry. Ooh. I won't be long. Uh-huh. <laughs> Hunley didn't think George should be eating a sloppy apple in the lobby. George decided it would probably be better to eat his apples someplace else. <laughs> Hunley had never been through this door before.
but he was pretty sure it was against the rules to be out here. Hunley didn't think George would ever get in that way. Hmm. So he'd find a better way. At least there was one thing Hunley knew for certain. Home was this way. Or maybe that way. Just imagine the terrible things that that sloppy monkey was doing to his lobby. When Hunley found his building, it was even worse than he imagined. But then Hunley saw that it wasn't his street at all. But that meant he had no idea where he was. Stick around. Come on, guys, let's go! <laughs> there was the Rinkin Silo. The river brought them back home. They weren't lost. All they had to do was stop. It was a long way to run, but when they got to that silo, they knew they'd be completely lost. It was the wrong silo. They were now even more lost than the lost chicks. George couldn't even find the river. Nothing looked familiar. But there was the duck rock again, a landmark. George had an idea. They saw the big duck rock. And what else did they pass on the river? The big trees, the boat, and Rankin's silo. The sun set behind the Rankin silo. Suddenly, they didn't feel so lost. They ran to that rock. But when they got there, it didn't look like the big duck rock. Oh. But as George walked around, <laughs> he discovered it was the big duck rock. Aha! 
the big trees. <laughs> they had found the next landmark. <laughs> and there was the boat. Another landmark. <laughs> if he followed the river all the way, he would find the silo with the sun right behind it. <laughs> but George realized that if he took the river all the way around, it would take too long. <laughs> they could just take a shortcut and follow the sun. <laughs> this couldn't be easier. Okay, it would have been easier if they could see where they were going. <laughs> they had to walk towards the sun. But how could they find it now? <laughs> it was that way. the chicks recognize those friendly monkey feet. Ah, we'll never find those chicks in the dark. <laughs> George! <laughs> Didn't I tell you to stay at the duck pen? <gasps> oh, you brought him home! You're a hero, monkey. George, how did you do it? <sighs> After a day lost in the country, what could be more relaxing than going home to the city? Did you see a raft at the river? <laughs> Bill made it for us. Next weekend, we take a relaxing raft trip. Won't that be fun? Ever thrown a surprise party for Mr. Quint before? Well, it's the only way to give him a party. Because they're such a big family? Exactly. I'm watching for Mr. Quint's boat. No sign of him. Oh, you don't have to watch yet, Bill. He won't be back for at least two hours. <laughs> Whoa! It's not my birthday, George. I'm not supposed to get surprised. <laughs> He's home early. No. Oh, what do we do? <laughs> oh, take him to your house and keep him there till party time. <laughs> not yet, George. Well, hey there, young fellas. Ooh, looks like you sprung a leak. Bad luck today, huh? Well, not all bad. Got to see part of the river I never saw before. <laughs> the bottom. Well, I gotta change my soggy socks. Don't, uh, don't. I, I mean, come to our house. <laughs> we want to build a fish pond and need expert advice about fish. Uh, well, sure. Well, let me just get some dry clothes. Here, dry clothes. Go help him. <sighs> All right, Mother, if you say so. Huh? No quint can resist fish crackers. They may come in handy. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, goodbye. Have fun. So George and the man with the yellow hat kept Mr. Quint busy with lots of questions. What do you think? <laughs> Well, if you make a pond that big, you can have almost any size fish. 
As George was about to ask exactly how many whales he could have, Mr. Quint's brother, Flint Quint, showed up. Hmm? Oh, uh, uh, hi. George, it's Mr. Quint's brother, the train station master. Hey, Clint, happy birthday. Hey, Flint, happy birthday. <laughs> oh, didn't you know the Quints were born together? Uh, so Flint can't know about the party either, okay? <laughs> the Quints were twins. Now George had two people to yell surprise at. It couldn't get any better. You know, I said you needed help, so I came right over. Well, this here's fish business, not trains, so you can weigh anchor. I'll meet you back at my house. <laughs> Don't go! I, oh, we want to know about running a train around the pond we're planning. <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> Hello? Oh, it's Mrs. Quint. Disaster. The bakery truck broke down, so they can't deliver the birthday cake. Don't worry. I, I can go pick it up. Oh, thank you. It's at Mr. Pescado's bakery over in Franklin Square. You can't run tracks across the pond. It'll scare the fish. Well, then we'll just have to tunnel. Guys, could you monkey sit for me while I run an errand? Uh, sure. We'll just figure out the pond while you're gone. <laughs> George, it's your job to keep the quince here so the surprise isn't wrecked, okay? <laughs> George knew this would be easy, because the Quint brothers would probably argue about the pond for hours. Well, we've got it all worked out. The perfect pond and train. <gasps> so we'll monkey sit you at my house where we could draw up plans. <laughs> George had to keep the quince here. It was important. The surprise. <laughs> Fish crackers. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Well, um... We could have fish crackers here and then go to my house. That's a good idea. Eating this many crackers would keep the quince here a long time. Somehow, this didn't look fair. Food could arrive by train at 10 o'clock and 3 o'clock. <laughs> Those look delicious. <laughs> My brother's wife requests that I proceed here to provide backup. Hey, Clint, happy birthday. Hey, Flint, happy birthday. Hey, Wint, happy birthday. Oh, didn't you know, George? All us quints were born together. Of course, I'm the oldest. <clears throat> By two minutes. The quints were triplets. Now George had three people to yell surprise at. Ah. Even better. Fish crackers. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Reel in your hooks. We were here first. Huh? George was going to need another plate to keep three whole quints here. <laughs> nice, but where's the police boat? <laughs> I've got juice at home that goes great with fish crackers. Let's eat these at my house. <laughs> George! <laughs> well, that's the same juice. Okay, we'll stay here so we don't have to wait for fish crackers. <laughs> 
Fish crackers. Ooh, ooh, ooh. George had to admit he had no juice. Happy birthday, boys! Happy birthday! George, meet our sister, Sprint Quint, the track star. She won three Olympic gold medals. Oh, pshaw. That was long ago. Count them. Three. The quints were quadruplets. Now George had four people to yell surprise at. This was the best. Ah, so I hear you need help putting a jogging track around a pond. Are those fish crackers? Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> but before he even tried to split 12 crackers onto five plates, Another quint showed up. Flint, plant, went, sprint. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <gasps> George, meet our sister, Mint Quint. She prints money for the government. Want samples of my latest work? So I hear you need help figuring out the cost of a pond. <laughs> Five? Oh, yeah, that's right. This is all of us. We're quintuplets. I wonder what this belongs to. Oh, George! I found your lost boat. <laughs> in the freezer. You know, George, if you were a little more careful with your toys, you wouldn't lose so many of them. You almost ready to go to the park? <laughs> hey, aren't you glad we found your boat, George? G George? Sharky wanted to play in the mud, too. <laughs> hey, George! What do you say we go home and grab some lunch? <laughs> Maybe you should try and clean up a little bit before we go. We could be here all day doing this. You can clean up at home, George. <laughs> okay, George, lunch is ready. George, you have to get cleaned up before you can eat. Just take a quick bath. I'll wait. There were only two things that could get George to take a bath. Bubbles and... and... Springy the Frog. George wondered where he could be. George? George, what is taking so long?
You can clean your room later, after you clean yourself, and after we eat lunch. <laughs> Hop in. Oh, I get it. You want to be launched like a new ship, huh? All right, here we go. Into the sea. Oh. <laughs> You're tickling me. <laughs> Look, I know you took a bath already this morning, but you're muddy, George. <laughs> hey, look at all the fun bubbles. See? There was no way George could take a bath without Springy, <laughs> who had to be around here somewhere. George? Oh. And there was no way George was going to admit he lost another toy. <laughs> who had to be here somewhere. <laughs> George! George! George, aren't you gonna take a bath? Are you gonna take a bath tonight? You don't know? Tomorrow? Ever? Oh, well, I can't have a muddy monkey messing up the apartment. <laughs> okay, George, forget about giving yourself a bath. How about we give your truck a bath? Huh? You don't mind if I wash my car while you wash your truck, do you? George loved making bubbles anywhere. He didn't need a tub. A bucket of water and a little soap worked too. They were so light and shining and filled with air. But making bubbles reminded him of Springy. <laughs> <laughs> there, all clean. Good job. guys. Oh, you're looking good, George. Hmm. Well, at least the right half of you is. <laughs> I guess someone's due for half a bath. I wish, but George won't take a bath anymore. I don't get it. Maybe George feels he's getting too old for a bath. Of course, that's it. My little monkey is growing up. Now I know exactly what to do. Come on, George, we're going in. Oh, thanks, Professor Wiseman. You're a genius. Well, yeah. I understand your problem with baths now, George. <laughs> and I agree, it's time for you to start taking showers. <laughs> Turn on the water, George, and see what happens. Oh. George. George. Okay. Won't take baths, won't take showers. I need to take a walk and not think about any problems for a while. But sometimes, not thinking about something is harder than you think. Bubbles. Maybe, somehow, Springy was nearby. <laughs> Hi, Betsy. Hi, Steve. Hello. Betsy made pretty good bubbles, but she was no plastic frog. Hey, George, 
We're washing dogs to make money. Want to help? Uh-huh. Yeah, George, why don't you help? There's soap and water and bubbles and soap. <laughs> Great. George can help me make bubbles to attract dirty customers. George figured the triangle bubble maker was broken. But a square bubble would be just as good. <laughs> they fooled me the first time I tried them, too. It doesn't matter what shape bubble maker you use, they'll always turn out round. All this bubble making made George miss Springy even more. Sharky, you're more mud than dog. Hey, George, would you help me? Could you wash Sharky's ball? Don't be shy about getting some of that clean water on yourself. <laughs> of course. The park. The mud. Sharky. <laughs> no, oh no, 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 you're getting dirtier. George, slow down. I... Okay, I'll meet you back home. Oh. Wow. You beat me home. Uh, why were we racing? George, you're taking a bath? Okay then, enjoy. I, um, wow. I wonder what that was all about. 